but to have the same functionality in your recipe, the weight of the sheets are different. So the only difference you will see, in fact, is the, the, the color, which will be slightly different. But this is, uh, this is made from, first of all, they make the gelatin as it is like this, they remelt it, and then put it on a different drying system. When you talk about dairy, <coughs> most of the gelatin in dairy is used in uh, yogurt production. So in yogurt production, you use small amounts of gelatin, 0 0.2, 0 0.3%, just to prevent cyanuresis. Cyanuresis is this little, way, little layer of whey you get on top of the yogurt. If you have small concentrations of uh, gelatin in a dairy application like yogurt, cyanuresis is, is, is prevented. And on top of that, as you see, you will have a kind of a shiny effect coming from the gelatin as well. So this is a stirred one, but you can have a set yogurt as well, so there are two types of yogurt. Another application is uh, chocolate mousse. There's no, no right chocolate mousse without gelatin because gelatin is the perfect stabilizer. When you look at the label here, it's a bit far for you, but you will see here they mention bovine type gelatin which is used in this type of chocolate mousse. If they say bovine type, we already know this will be alkaline type gelatin for the simple reason that in the recipe you have carrageenans. And if you need the correct functionality of your carrageenan together with your gelatin, you need a bovine type, a bovine alkaline type to have the right charges. So both of the, the components air have a negative charge to have an optimal functionality. Everybody knows Dan Danio. Danio is not a yogurt. It's called a fermented dairy product because in France, when they add gelatin to yogurt, they cannot call it yogurt anymore. So Danio is using, in fact, in, for this application, they're using um, small amounts of gelatin to stabilize, but they are not allowed to use to call it yogurt anymore. Other uh, aerated products from Nestlé, once you aerate, the perfect stabilizer and aerating uh, capacity comes from the gelatin. Low-fat spreads, so you can use gelatin, in fact, to make a low-fat spread. So here you use a high bloom, a high bloom gelatin. You make an emulsion of your water and your fat, and, and by this you can reduce your fat uh, content to about 50%. Meat is quite obvious, I think. Uh, two, uh, two main functionalities just to cover, <coughs> just to cover, in fact, your meat products and to in this cover in this kind of aspect to put the herbs, uh, decoration, etc., but also to stick together the pieces of meat. Or you have ham, for example, which you inject together in, in the brine. You can inject herbs, you can inject salt together with gelatin. It's injected in the ham, it's cooked, and then while cooking your gelatin is dissolved, absorbs and binds a lot of water. And this is why you have this very cheap ham. Nice thing to do is if, if you buy cheap ham, put it in the microwave for a few seconds and then you will see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then you should have been buying a very cheap ham. <laughs>